guys, so today I am doing a nail art essentials video, kind of a beginner's guide, I guess, which I shouldn't even be doing because I'm, I'm a fresh beginner in nail art myself. I really don't do a lot of nail art, and um, when I do, it's just basic stuff. But, I mean, there's a lot of really basic stuff that you can make look really cool, and so I kind of want to talk to you guys about what, you know, basic nail art, um, what I think are essentials for starting out with nail art. So basically, uh, the first things are just a black and white nail polish. Uh, this, these are both from Sally Hansen Extreme Wear, uh, white on and black out. And I mean, you go through these a ton, you use them as bases for a lot of nail art, white especially, um, bases for certain glitters, you just, you will constantly be going through a black and white nail polish as you get more into nail art. So uh, I would suggest just some inexpensive ones at first uh, until you kind of get a feel for what you like just because you do go through them really fast. Uh, the next things are stripers. Now even a regular striper can be kind of difficult to master, um, but I would suggest if you really want to get the hang of a striper, try using glitter stripers first because they, they're they easier, you know, they're not like a solid polish and if your line's a little crooked it's a lot harder to tell if you're using a glitter striper. So they're a little bit more forgiving when you're first starting out. So I would suggest glitter stripers for sure. These first two are from Art Deco LA Colors. You can get these just about anywhere. I think I got these on Amazon actually. And then the other ones that I have um, were from Simply Spoiled Beauty Products. They had asked me to pick a set uh, or pick something off their website to send to review and I'll probably be doing a tutorial with these soon but they didn't send what I picked um, and I had a specific tutorial planned for the colors that I picked and they sent um, they sent these stripers and they were all glitter except for the black so I can't do what I plan on doing so I'm trying to figure out something to do with these but they are really nice because um, they have a brush so you can twist off and you have a striper brush the one that I had picked out from the website had more solid colors because these have the striper that you can unscrew, but if you take this cap off, um, they also have a like metal tipped um, pen end so you can draw very, very precisely with them. So these are really nice for that. I had just um, had a plan for the solid colors and then was sent a bunch of glitters and black. So I have to figure out something to do with these because, I mean, they're nice, but the glitter, it kind of defeats the purpose of the pen because glitter stripers are so easy to use anyway. So I have a black, though, which is kind of like a basic color that I would want to have. So I'll figure something out with it. But those are an option also, something like this. I know you can get these on Amazon. You can get these just about anywhere. I would just look uh, very closely to the description because these ones with the metal tip are way more precise and easier to use than, like, felt tip nail art pens. So the next thing that's kind of an essential is a good cleanup brush. I still am just using the $1 e.l.f. concealer brushes. They last a pretty decent amount of time and they're only a dollar so when they fall apart from the acetone it's not a big deal. So this one that I have is really beat up but it works. Um, and then also one of these little brushes, or one of these little cups. Uh, my mom had these laying around from when she uh, used to do nails and I think they're more for like acrylic liquid. But I use them to put my acetone in when I'm doing cleanup because acetone evaporates very, very fast. And if you're sitting there with the cap off of your big bottle of acetone, uh, you're just, you're wasting it. It's evaporating into the air every time, you know, as long as the cap's off. So I like to pour a little bit into one of these jars and dip my brush in from the jar so that I'm not having it evaporate out of the bottle. So it's just easier to have it in one of these. You can get these on Amazon too. I forget what I searched for because I have two of these and um, one of them I got on Amazon before I snatched the blue one from my mom. It's like acrylic nail little jar, nail art jar, something like that. You want to make sure that the one you get is glass just because it's easier to clean up and everything. The next thing uh, that I think is really important are these little hole reinforcement stickers. You can use these as guides for half moons, for French manicure, you know, there's a lot of different cool things that you can do with these and they're really inexpensive and you cut them in half and you know you can use one for two different nails so I mean it's just a good little guide thing to have there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with these. Dotting tools are really really great because they are so incredibly easy to use 
and you know you can do a lot with them. You can use the smaller ended ones to actually draw with the polish, you know, you can use the big ones to make big dots. I have a set of five that I got from Amazon for I think like three dollars or something. I just keep them in this weird little um, brush holders that came in a glam bag like before they were ipsy. So yeah, really inexpensive on Amazon and um, you can do a ton of stuff with dotting tools, way more than just doing dots. I love my gradients. I absolutely love doing gradients, so I highly suggest having some makeup wedges around. Um, I would definitely get into the habit of cutting these in half at least because you can get a lot more of get more use out of just one sponge because once they dry up they get you know once the polish dries on them they get kind of weird and hard to manage um, but if you cut them in half first then you've already got you know another clean half that you can use so great for gradients um, which is a form of nail art that you know doesn't take a lot of steady handedness or drawing or anything like that so you can make really cool looking nails with very little effort so I would suggest having some of those laying around Striping tape is awesome. Scotch tape is also um, really good. What's cool about striping tape is you can get it, like I got a little set on Amazon and it came with a bunch of different colors of striping tape. And what's really nice about it is um, you can use it to make stripes and peel it up or you can just use it for like the actual color on the tape. So there's a lot of different stuff you can do with this. Scotch tape is another thing that I totally forgot to grab but you can make a lot of shapes with scotch tape as well. The key to that is that when you paint over the striping tape or the scotch tape, make sure that you um, first wait until your base color is 100% totally dry. Uh, stick your tape to your skin first so that there's not so much adhesive going on to the, um, the base color. And then when you paint your color over it, make sure that you peel it up right away because if you wait for it to dry at all, then you'll peel up the polish around it as well. And the same goes for nail vinyls, which I can't find mine and I know they're around here somewhere, but that's another thing that I would suggest having in a kit. Um, Nailvinyls.com. I think there's a bunch of different places making them now, but they make um, chevrons and things like that. Really, really easy to do. And you don't have to worry about cutting out your own chevrons and making them like super uneven. So that's another thing that would be helpful to have around. The only other thing that I have left to mention are studs and gems and stuff, because you can do a ton with that and there's like almost zero skill required. You just stick it on your nail. I have a bunch here to show you guys that I've kind of been collecting over time. I have these like crazy, you know, stick up spikes and some triangle studs. You can I'd, uh, apply these with top coat or just with whatever your nail polish is. You can put them on when they're still wet. Uh, colored pearls, more like silver and gold studs, and then neon studs, which I'm really excited about doing some stuff with. I just dumped something everywhere. And you can get these really cheap off of Amazon. A lot of times they'll come from China, so they take a while to get there, but they're really inexpensive and come in these nice little wheels. Um, one thing I would suggest getting, though, if you are going to get studs and things like that, is this. And this is a wax pencil. And basically, you can pick up your studs with this because it will stick to the wax, but it won't stick to the wax so much that it doesn't let go when you touch it to wet polish. So you can pick these up and stick them onto your nail and just sharpen these as they go. These were really, I think I got like five of these for like $2. And yeah, you just sharpen them as you go like a regular pencil, but the lead is actually just wax and it makes it really, really easy to pick up studs and stick them on your nails. And um, you know, you can readjust them and whatnot. So yeah, those are some kind of beginner nail art kit ideas. Like I said, I'm not a big nail art pro and I would love to be more into nail art than I am. I just tend to not have a lot of time for it anymore. Um, but there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do that doesn't take a lot of time and doesn't take a lot of skill initially, you know, so you don't have to go out with some like crazy looking, you know, messed up manicure. You can do a lot of cool stuff and make it look really, really nice without needing to practice it a lot or not needing an incredibly steady hand because I definitely don't <laughs> and I can't draw to save my life. So. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you guys later.